Hi everyone, I need to know if you can hear me. I just had some issues with my sound. Welcome, I'm so glad you're here. We're going to, we had a couple of options today. Whoops, what am I doing? Clicking on things I shouldn't be. <laughs> oh, excellent, thanks Cordelia. I'm so excited to be here. I did send out a request and uh, gave the dance card to you guys and you chose to see some scrappy cards, uh, card ideas so I'm pretty excited about that because I've done three recent videos where I've been uh, trying to get through my scrappy stash and we've all got lots of scrap card stock so if you did miss those three videos I've got them linked in the description below there is uh, more than 16 ideas there to inspire you to get into your scrap stash <laughs> okay don't forget to change that top chat to live chat um, so that you can catch all the comments as you go and if you've got any questions Michelle thank you she's there looking after you for me <laughs> so don't forget to write them in capitals because it does scroll through I do miss them and Michelle picks them up sometimes and yells very nicely at me <laughs> all right so there's a few different ideas that I had and did you see I saw you over at the Alton New stamp wheel they just did a live it was released officially today so if you had pre-ordered that because that was the other choice was to um, do some techniques with the Alton New stamp wheel but hey there's a whole video hop happening that you can see that so that hopefully will um, answer a lot of your questions and mine probably <laughs> I haven't used it a lot yet so uh, I'm gonna get started I'm so glad you're all here it's exciting I know there was lots of lives on this afternoon so this you've probably seen all these scraps already <laughs> and there was a couple of different ideas I thought I'd start with one of my favorite which was and I'm gonna let you choose um, so die cut layers I did that in my very first video so I have two let me know which one you want me to use with my scraps I've got the sulfur cosmos which is um, like there's two flowers this is a beautiful set I haven't used this anywhere near enough yet I really like that. I like the shape of these leaves on this set too. And also the swallowtail butterfly. What does everyone want me to layer up with coloured cardstock? Let me know in... I know. <laughs> I can't let you get away without any work here. <laughs> I know, so I think Michelle chooses flower... No, butterflies. <laughs> If you've ever been to Michelle's, um, on, it's mostly on the Instagram, isn't it, Michelle, that you share your butterflies that you hatch every year. They're pretty amazing. And you've got an, a very clever husband who does awesome photography. Butterflies, I'm thinking butterflies. Yes, let's do that. Hi, Carol. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> okay. And I am hoping to be able to edit this video and put it up as a replay. So, um, so it depends on how I go with my storage. I've had to buy a new storage device and set that up. So that's always fun. All right, let's do butterflies. So I had an idea. These ones are, oh, there's two in here. And I might do the big one. Yeah, let's go there. Oh, some leftovers from last time. It's quite a good size butterfly on a card. Oh, let me just show you. But when I was doing these, um, the flowers in the original video, I was thinking oh, that butterflies would be a really good option too. So there's a base, uh, the next layer. What else do we need? I think there's that. that yep, that goes there. I think I actually had it. And that goes there. Is that enough? There's one, two, three, four layers. That's it, isn't it? And just in case you haven't used one of these layering die sets before, you can get a guide more so with the flowers for whether you want to use a lighter or a darker cardstock on each layer just by um, what the packaging 
shows you. I might need to leave that packaging off to the side because I think I've only put this one together once before. <laughs> so when I'm choosing my cardstocks, I'm probably not going to make a tartan or a plaid butterfly. What do you reckon? <laughs> not. But I am thinking these Alta New colours always look good, don't they? These multi. I'll get a couple of them out. See what I can find. Yes, it is on Instagram. Yeah. I love every year. Is it on your front porch or that you have the nursery? Is it a nursery when you have <laughs> butterflies? Oh, these will be pretty. Oh, look at those. Okay. Now we're talking. So literally this is what I do. I just go through my scraps and choose things that I think might work and uh, the sizes of the cardstock are going to work as well. And then layer it up. I'm not going to need them, are, am I? I can see it's going to get a little bit messy today. I think that would be good for the darker layer. And then that would be pretty for the main layer. That's probably not the right pink, although that would be fun, wouldn't it, to have that as the base with the pink on top. You can try it. If it doesn't work, it's scrap cardstock. So we might do that. What's everyone been up to? Has everyone been getting a little bit crafty? I've had, I know I haven't been around town very much lately, but I've been doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff, which has been good because that means there's things coming up. I reckon just needing something to do that bit, aren't I? It was a lighter colour. I could probably. Yeah. Meh. Too many decisions. I know. If I make it into that, that's going to work well with this colour, isn't it? All right. We're good. Well, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> I would love, you guys can come and raid my scrap, scrap drawer. I think that would be very helpful. <laughs> but then sometimes just getting through, through your scraps actually makes you think outside the box a little bit when it comes to, um, eh, I want this to fit on here. By making yourself, challenging yourself to use something you normally wouldn't have. Well, that should work, shouldn't it? Okay. I'm deciding to give my pro deck another go. Hi Tracy, welcome. Has it been a hot summer, guys? <laughs> I've got the air conditioning on here this morning, just saying. I know you guys have had a cold winter, but we've had a very hot summer. Now, one thing I have noticed with this Pro Deck is it doesn't always cut perfectly. It's a bit annoying. And I'm thinking it's more the cardstock itself. I'm still getting used to it. I don't want them in there. I'll just recut that. Hopefully that will work. Otherwise we'll go again. Yeah. So I've had this magnetic, it's from iCrafter, um, die cutting because technically it's not meant to warp your plates for the Gemini. And I've had it for a while. And I went onto their website and used the sandwich that they recommended. Yeah, it's Pro, Pro Deck it is. And um, 
and it was didn't work for me at all like it was um, it actually bubbled on the plate so I did reach out to them and they kindly got back to me and um, but it wasn't very helpful at the time but recently uh, I think it was at the last summit I saw a video that Ardith had done see what I mean there's a couple of little spots it's okay still getting used to it and it seems to be the kind of paper I'm working it out but um, Ardith shared a different sandwich to the one that I'd used and um, it does work most of the time but like I'm saying here sometimes there's just those little bits that don't uh, die cut perfectly but I'm persisting at the moment because I've got sick of rebuying the plates because they warp so quickly does anyone else have that problem? What do you mean colour your butterflies? <laughs> As in like colour stamped butterflies or your butterflies, your baby ones? Oops. So yes, watch this space, you'll know, I'll let you know how it's going. But so far it's good because it's not warping at all and I'm using it all the time. Just that one little hiccup and I'm working out whether I can try a different sandwich I really great using a bubble envelope under fine detail dies now I haven't ever seen that see I've lost that one haven't I I shouldn't have doubled up double die cut I can't even say the word <laughs> yeah, I think it's definitely this cardstock. Although that one, and then I was thinking maybe it's the area of the plate that it's sitting in. The things we do as crafters, seriously. I've tried that many different sandwiches. In the, in the Gemini. <laughs> All right. So I've got a busy day today. We've got visitors coming for tea tonight, staying, friends from the Sunshine Coast. And I bought my husband a, you know, the Weber charcoal cookers. I bought him one, a rotisserie that attaches to the top of that. Uh, as a Christmas present this year so he's gonna well, we haven't really had a chance to use it till now I can't believe it's the end of March <laughs> anyway so he's gonna crack that out today and give it a try and I've made I us make yesterday oh not yesterday I made a, um, a pavlova it's very Australian but I've made, um, it's a triple layer pavlova. So that could be very interesting. Now, I've never had this amount of trouble before. But he just grew some, does anyone know what, um, the name of the fruit? We've got it in our backyard. Uh, 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 I'm having a moment. that really bright red one or there's a white one I'm gonna have to go I can't say that word I'll kick off my little machine I'm gonna have to research it but anyway he wants to add his own fruit to the top of it and do like a coolie so I'm gonna like it's all getting fancy there's gonna be so much pav there so if you want to come around for tea <laughs> tonight we're having a rotisserie and pav layered pav or eaten mess. <laughs> um, which company has the best magnetic plate? Are you talking about for the Gemini? 
because there's a few uh, depending on what machine you've got I know the manual die cutting machines have the magnetic plates as well and they are good and bad like I um, have used them before on the Big Shot but often just keep going back to my original plate oh, I'm getting there this poor butterfly I feel for it pomegranate oh no no it's um I keep thinking of jackfruit and it's not jackfruit <laughs> it's a tropical one it's bright purple dragon fruit thank you Wendy I love you <laughs> it is it's dragon fruit if anyone's seen what the dragon fruit um, tree looks like it looks almost like a um, cactus bush and the flowers I did a the flowers are huge. I think I was telling you about the flowers last time I was on a live. You know. And they're literally, like, so the flowers are this, this big. And they only last one day. And we had nine come out at once last week. So um, we're going to have a bit of fruit. But they can be quite big, these dragon fruit. So who else has been getting into their scrap stash? Did you see my last video? It was um, focusing on using your scraps to create masculine cards. Ah, oh, done. So, you know, if you watch the replay, you won't have to watch me do that. <laughs> He wants to sit through me doing that. <laughs> maybe I'll have to reach out to Ardith and see if she's having the same problem or if it may be because I actually ruined my deck the first time I was trying to use it. It could be me more than the deck. I don't know, but most of the time it works okay, but not all of the time. Now, what was this? How do I put this together again? Yeah, that's right. So this one goes... It's a bit odd, isn't it? It's pretty though, but it sits underneath there. And then that sits over top. So I would have felt that would be on top myself. But I'm only going to put glue sort of on that bit. So this is um, almost going to sit up. And we'll have a butterfly very soon. I'm a convert to the Barely Arts glue. Has anyone else tried it? I don't, Spellbinders, is that the large plate that you're talking about? I know they've got an extension plate. Um, I don't know if that one's magnetic. Yeah, a total convert, I like it. it it's very sim similar to the matte medium. I do love that one as well, but I think the apricot looks really pretty with that. I think last time I did this, I might not have used this section. I can't remember. It's nice. I'm glad you chose this one. I haven't used this butterfly anywhere near enough. It's kind of making me a bit. <laughs> and it's fairly fast drying, which I like too. It's actually, I feel it's faster drying than the... Um, this is the only bit I struggle with, is the getting the pin back in the lid because of my <laughs> multifocals. <laughs> it's a pretty butterfly. No, I think we do need to. Um, oh, I'm looking for the thing, stamp well. Because I figured I could do, actually I could probably just stamp straight on the base, can't I? 
give it a try. I don't think I've stamped with a double Dover cardstock in this yet. Now I know there's been a few people talking to me about the um, stamp wheel. I know everyone's interested in pros and cons. <laughs> but I've had a couple of people mention how, how um, big it looks, but it's actually uh, I just don't think that's going to fit. Might be better if I go on an angle. Because this is a sticky grid mat. I'll make sure we can see that flower. This is, what is this one? The Courageous You, I think it is. And then, so I just put the lid down. I have found that um, it's getting better. When I first got it, um, one of the corners was a bit tight. But that seems to be um, loosening as I'm using it. But I wanted to just show you, it's not that much difference in size to my, this is the regular Misty. Because I had a comment, but it does sit that little bit wider because of the, can you see that? Because of the flip plate. Other than that, the actual base itself is very similar and it's the same height. Or just slightly like a plastic it just sits under so that's um, one thing I noticed because I thought it was going to be big too oh no good Lisa well so far I'm enjoying the stamp wheel I know that it's um, there's benefits to the stamp wheel if you don't like if you don't already have a misty like a, a stamp positioning tool anyone you can position stamps but there are some benefits to the stamp wheel that I'm finding I didn't think I'd use like I'm actually using the the photopolymer um, stamp stamp the photopolymer base within the stage a lot more than I thought I would so to do things like blend and color I've been oh, I missed a bit And I've only got one, I put one dot on mine and I did it crooked, meaning like I haven't got the crosshairs. Such a big stamp this one. But yeah, I've actually like left my image in there to do colouring and I don't know, it just um, was interesting. It's funny, it's the things that you buy and use and you don't, how you think you're going to use them is totally different. It's like my heat tool, it's the dual heat tool. And I was, um, where was that not stamped? I can't remember now, I'm too busy talking. And I never thought I'd use the low heat on the heat tool, but um, I use it all the time. <laughs> Isn't that a beautiful stamp? I like those bouquets. It's all ready to go. Snap one stamp, or well, two, and you're done. But yeah, the photo, that's what I was kind of saying, like the, I never thought I'd use that sticky base more than I did. And I suppose if I think about it, I actually use my, the sticky grid mat in the Misty is a similar kind of um, works very similarly with, and I have that in one of my misties and use that but there's some really good videos released on the hop today so if you want to get some really good in-depth information on the stamp wheel then um, that would be excuse me <laughs> where I'd head to. The price, it's not cheap, Wendy. Where are you? If you're in Australia, I think I've seen it for sale in Australia for $160. What was the, and I think the Misty was 100 and, or 120. So, you know, it's, it's definitely an investment, but if, 
you know, if you've already got a stamp positioning tool, how pretty is that? Then um, just keep an eye and see what you think. And like what happened to Lisa, I can't believe you dropped it, Lisa. That's <laughs> that's terrible. Um, I was just lucky. I, I received one because I'm part of the design team, so I feel very. I'm just looking, sorry, I'm just trying to find some dots here. Some fine tape, you think I'd have some? I've got like a million of them. To go for the roll. I was going to do a low level one, or just to go, go big. But it's um, definitely got some benefits. I saw them using it today as a um, doing mirror stamping, blending on it using your stencils which I've done, colouring on it I've done um, just basic stamping. <laughs> this poor little butterfly. We're off the edge. And I'm very organised today, am I? This is a bold sentiment. I just I knew I had a couple in the pack just to add a quick sentiment to the card. <laughs> what else? JC had a really good video. Um, and he had lots of layering tips and techniques. I've also got one uh, that I shared recently doing the roses, but that was like literally, I think the first time I'd ever used the stamp positioning wheel. So it was really good to like just work out. And I think it's one of those things, the more you play with it, the more you're going to um, find more uses for it. I think it's going to have a lot more uses than we're already having. I know there's some plans in progress at Altenew for some more things to use with it so keep an eye out for that as well. But like I said it's an investment. I remember I'm, I sat on the, on the sidelines for such a long time with the Misty and um, and didn't get one and then once I got it <laughs> such a game changer I couldn't work out what took me so long I think it needs some bling so I might do that before the photo so that's one idea the next idea I was thinking was to do I, and I shared this in one of my videos as well was to do some fussy cutting. No, was that it? Paper piecing. I can't even say the right thing. <laughs> I thought this cute little dog would be cool for that. So, well, we might as well use the stamp wheel. You can use it in a corner like you do with the... Yeah, and that's the benefit. I'm just sorry, I'm just reading Monica's comment there. I'll have to go back and read the comments because I've kind of um, I've just got focused on creating today. That's what we're here for, isn't it? So this set, what is it? Clever Sausage. So it's just obviously like a reg regular stamping as well. And you can just tuck things in the corner. I typically have been just popping them in the, in the middle of the mat. Do you see what I mean when I said I actually put my dot on? Because <laughs> I think normally you'd have it square, but that's probably the Gemini in me. <laughs> and I have found if your stamp is really sticky, it may pick up the paper with you, but that once you've added the ink on there, like if you've prepped your stamp, it's more if the stamp's brand new. 
that I've had that happen. So it hasn't been an issue, but it's just something to be aware of. But if you condition your stamp, you um, won't have that problem. But it's those little things that you'll work out over time. Now we need to choose some. Where's my thing? A coat. <laughs> That'd be fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> I haven't had, like, I was kind of thinking, because the door on the Misty is, um, it's set and forget, and especially the newer Misty with the, the steel hinges. Um, the first one, so I'm just trying to work out how to dress my little boy. <laughs> Um, I kind of, are we feeling rainbowy or plaidy? Let me know. She needs a plaid. That past, okay, I agree. <laughs> I'm thinking that. Now, now I've got to find it. <laughs> How do you store your scraps? Do you have like a system? Much better than this. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Do you keep them coloured, coded, or in a um, perhaps in pockets, or do you just have them all together? Or do you keep them in the packets? I used to always keep them in the, in the packets. What colour are we going? Green and orange, purple. See, and you wonder why it takes me so long to make a card. I can't make a decision. <laughs> it's just talking flat here. Um, now, I'm not going to colour that, am I? Sometimes I will add, speaking of not colour it, sometimes when I do paper piecing, I'll actually add some shading to the actual bit that I'm piecing. Document folders. Yeah. I used to, but I don't keep a lot of, I don't keep a lot of um, scraps anymore. I don't actually buy a lot of design paper, to be honest, because I wasn't using it. I would rather buy, overall, you'll see me, I'll buy a background stamp or um, die, because that way I don't hoard it <laughs> like, like I do my paper. Figure, go figure that one out. Probably should have done a hat, don't you think? A hat would be fun. Colour coded, yeah. I think if you had have a lot of scraps, that's the only way to go. Otherwise, you'd never use them. And I know when I kept, um, I'm just going to do some really simple colouring here. When I used to keep, you know, like have all the plain coloured cardstock, oh, I think this needs re-inking. Um, I had like a expander file thing, and I had each sort of colour family in in the expander file, like in the sections, and that worked extremely well. And I would always go to that first when I needed, you know, when I was doing some die cutting or something, that would be my first place to go. Then if I couldn't find the colour I wanted in there, then I'd go and like get a new piece of cardstock out. But um, I don't know what happened with that plan. I don't, because I don't use, maybe I'm doing a lot more stamping and die cutting now. So I'm not using as much um, just regular cardstock because we do change over time. Do I need? I don't know if I need any 
shading we'll see I've got my black marker out so with um, fussy cutting it's just take your time oh, I'm glad this is a nice simple one <laughs> I actually wasn't thinking about that when I chose the dog I just really like this image it's an older one from Alan Hudson but you could pretty much use like um, any design paper on this kind of an image a lot of fun and I haven't looked up it's probably a question for me to answer is there I agree, colour coded. <laughs> so I didn't see who's coming around for Pav. <laughs> Your craft room looks amazing, Lisa. I think you've done such an incredible job. Your brother is it your brothers that helped um, convert it? I think that's what you shared so that your wheelchair could become wheelchair friendly and there should definitely be cup holders on wheelchairs <laughs> I think this mark has seen <laughs> better days anyway it's working isn't it just um, I'm edging the cardstock just to get rid of the raw cut edges but with these you can't really use Copics or alcohol markers to do the edging because it will especially when the cardstock's this thin it will seep into the actual cardstock itself which is not good because I've done a party hat <laughs> And I found the, oh, what am I doing? Sometimes, that was the other thing with the magnet, magnetic plates, I don't know if anyone else has got them, is the, um, if you get two bits of metal right near each other, they can draw or shift. So especially if I'm, if I'm cutting out something that's specific, I see that that's happening I will actually still come in and just use like a piece of tape but the sandwich here is really strong which is weird that it doesn't always cut so I think it's um, that's what makes me think it's card related cardstock related because it's there's so much pressure the tape will stick on the image so I tend to put the tape on the outside edges so it doesn't tear my image Oh, <laughs> Lisa, you've got a very clever husband and son. <laughs> See that cut perfectly. Mm, I think the butterfly was just being difficult. <laughs> okay, add to the mess. Oh, you know what I should have done? I like, because I'm probably going to pop it up. Um, you know that I like to actually die cut twice and then layer it. That way it's going to have some support when it goes through the post. So that, I'm pretty sure that's Lawn Fawn. They've got some amazing... Um, plaids and ginghams actually I've got some ginghams from them I've been on a bit of a gingham kick <laughs> lately <laughs> just in case you hadn't been around I think I had like five cards how cute is that no, I'm not going to do any shading I want it to be nice and simple cool Tracy it'll only take you seven hours to get here it's time, you'll be here in time for tea. <laughs> it 
no one's got all day to wait for me to put that back in there. And that's one thing I've noticed, I have to, when I layer up my die cuts with the barely art glue, is anyone else finding that? Um, only four and a half hours, cool, even better. You can have afternoon tea first. Um, you have to be quick to line them up. I am Cordelia, I'm on, it's Easter weekend, I'm guest. I think that's the, for me it's the Saturday. So anyone in Australia, <laughs> want to see me on sweat buckets I'm on craft roulette it's the second time I've done it and I was the one who got ro robot on the wheel <laughs> it's so lucky me but that was my first that was my first time kind of a bit weird with oh no that's cool I didn't want the edge being around oh it was nice and close um but yes on the I think it's the Friday night so is it the 7th or the 8th of April I'm on craft roulette with Mary Gunn fun who is so much fun seriously she's pretty awesome and she's a, amazing for our community Okay, so the reason I thought about using this dog is I've got a card coming up soon that I made this sentiment for. And I thought, it probably needs to be not Going back to plan A. <laughs> it's a big sentiment, that one. So that's like um, from the Trippin. So if you keep an eye out on my blog. I've got a card coming up um, very soon. I'm going to centre it. No, I'm not. How long have you got? Just let me know because we'll be here all day. <laughs> Just by doing this. Just waiting for me to work out placement. Always the way. I hope you like Pav. Because I kind of want to do it in a, you know, when you do the rule of thirds, I wanted to do that there. It's just not looking right. I think it looks the best there. Thank you, Deb. I was um that was no pressure. I'm gonna have to go and check the wheel out and see what's on the parameters and because I've had um a big D stash, so <laughs> I find if I have less stuff I get more creative. Are you the same? I'm very lucky that I receive product because I'm on design teams I love that but if you have too much I find it's overwhelming so a destash helps my brain there you go how are we going for time we good <laughs> have we got time for one more or are we done so craft roulette Karen is where they spin a wheel, a roulette wheel, and um, there are four parameters, I think one is card shape, one is card colour theme, another one is an element and then I like a surprise, so um, it was um, fun <laughs> and you've got and I've got like you an hour or so to get some supplies together and make a card using those four parameters it's a lot of fun but um, live <laughs> wasn't so it wasn't so easy but it was does that make sense once you get started card making it's easy of course one more all right and I was thinking the other one I do was I had a lot of um, 
with this one here. People seem to like this card here. It's got the um, texture through it. Do you want me to do one with that, maybe? Yes. <laughs> I definitely prefer watching craft roulette, roulette than being on the um, <laughs> actual. Um, they call it live. Oh, I'm really struggling with my words today. I'm not sleeping well at the moment, so I'll blame that. This is just double-sided tape, and this is literally just copy paper, so it's nice and thin because I want to run this through my die cutting machine. I don't want to think about this too much, so I thought I'd do like like a girly version. Do you reckon? Because I did all the boy stuff last time. What have I got? I need your help. So I'm looking for stuff that's going to fit across the width of a card. Oh, that might work. That might work. So it's got to be like the six inches wide. <laughs> that should be enough, shouldn't it? No, don't like that. It's going the wrong way. Do you think that'll be enough? We'll see. It's quite eclectic what's left. I think I'm doing alright. Getting through it. And I literally can just and it doesn't have to be the last one was the whole width of a card, wasn't it? But this one could be Maybe that could work. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Always. I, there's a very popular dog here in Australia, sausage dogs. This is the hardest bit. Lifting up the release paper and getting this straight we can do it no pressure <laughs> so who has ordered the stamp wheel I know a couple of you said you had so you must be getting them soon So it is a um, big decision though. It's nice that it's been released today. I didn't even realise that when I put that forward as an option. Like, um, because I think my mine's coming up tomorrow. So I think it was the video hop was today. Cordelia, you ordered it. Yeah. And that was one of the things people commented. I think people wanted to see the scrap videos because not everyone sort of was going to have the stamp, you know, like it's not going to suit everyone to watch that, whereas everyone's got scraps. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do a second video um, sharing some ideas with the stamp wheel one and play with it. Maybe I might even do another live if there's enough interest. Yeah, and I think if I was in the position that I needed a stamp positioning tool it'd be it'd be probably the one I'd go for right now just because of the other options that you could do can do with it and I know what's coming <laughs> so it's gonna be even more options so it'll be good all right so what am I going to do this time so last time I grabbed out a couple of these this is the one I used last time which is the stitched wood grain backdrop I'm really tempted to use it again but I thought I'd do something different there's also like this dotted swirls debossing one so that one will cut and no it doesn't it doesn't cut the edge it just does the debossing 
but oh there's just some sentiments I had really maybe um, or this one thought that one would put a pretty cool pattern on there and that's an older one cozy flannel so these are actually cutting dies so you can cut it if you want but I was thinking more about doing another impression so any preferences which one stitch yeah I'm kind of I was going to show you how to do the um but I have done that before how to yes you enabled me for this one my friend <laughs> How to do because you can use a regular die and make it into an impression as opposed to see habit I'm just using tape um, so I'm wondering if I kind of when I squished my pro deck <laughs> I seriously bubbled it so I'm wondering if that was like me wiener dogs <laughs> it's the ultimate paper crafting card making game show challenge <laughs> yes it is exactly that <laughs> and then you can create a card this is of the craft roulette we're back on that again now See how I've done that? That's okay. I can just cut that out because the impression's there, isn't it? How cool is that die? I love it. And then I have got the extra layer in there. So I can't. But um with craft roulette. Let's get that out of the road. You can actually make a card using the parameters yourself and then share it. Oh, I think, is it on their face? Is it a Facebook one that you share it in? I can't remember for sure. I think that's where you, sh where you share it. I need a new blade in here too. So that should fit on the front of a card pretty much card bases correctly to raise and then I thought it'd be fun to add like a white are we thinking white? Have it. It's on their website, is it? Okay. They're big. Um, they've got like I think they've gone to episode like 100 and 158 now, something like that. It's getting it's huge. Yeah. How did that one go? Beautiful. Keep the tittle. I'm gonna need more, aren't I? <laughs> it's habit. It's habit. Thank you, Becky. I know it's not very um, structured, but I really just wanted to come in and play and see how many cards I could make and get working through this stash of scraps. I um, want to give you a challenge too. 
<laughs> One day when you're going to sit down and make cards, why not challenge yourself to use as many scraps as you can in one session like maybe say make even if you just make four cards or five cards or something I reckon that'd be because that's what I've you know basically been doing and then sharing it with you and I've still got more ideas. Like the more the more I use my scraps, the more ideas I'm getting. So, and lots of people give me great ideas too. Thank you very much. <laughs> but yeah, this, instead of getting out all the new stamps and dies and things, get out the bits and pieces that were half done. You know, because what I do is like that speech bubble. I made that for another card, didn't like the way it looked on the card, remade it in a different style, but then I had that speech bubble sitting there and I wasn't going to use that, not anytime soon. So I, um, when I was looking at the wiener dog, <laughs> it made me think of that sentiment. Yes, now, I think there's a limit on how many people you can have in a Zoom. You might know, I'm, um, because I didn't actually do many Zoom meetings, because <laughs> I was at the hospital working. I didn't, um, from everyone else was working from home and doing things by Zoom. I'm a big Mary Gunn fan. She's just such a fun lady. And she's been in that paper crafting industry or card industry for, um, you're all laughing at me now, aren't you? Since the beginning of time. So she's seen it all. And she's got a huge heart. I'm just um, lining that up before I do that. And all that's left to do is add the sentiment. <laughs> and we're done. Yeah, I heard that. I think um, maybe we can piggyback on someone else's paid version. <laughs> The other thing is I have been mentioning in my, thank you for everyone who did respond to my choice for today's live. Um, but you may have noticed in that email that I'm going to start up a free resource at my blog soon. So I'm just um, doing a fine tuning how that's going to be, but I think it'll have to be like, because um, there's some videos there I've got to share. and that you may not have seen and um, some more freebies that you may not have yet so just have to work out. I think I'm going to have to share them on the YouTube channel for the videos but make it like a private group so just for you guys and if you aren't on my email list yet, it's, um, I promise I don't email too often. <laughs> the only time you might get a few extra emails is when there's maybe a summit coming up. So please bear with me for that. But other than that, I typically will email maybe once a fortnight. And that'll just um, give you an update what we're up to. And, uh, or if I'm doing a live, Oh, I probably could have popped that up. You don't have time for that though, do you?
and I will probably add a little bit of bling to this because I have a lot. <laughs> and this does have a shadow die cut as well, but um, so you can see on that how far that presses in and actually pushes the impression into the thing so maybe I've just got the sandwiches too thick it's weird yet it doesn't always cut through anyway I'll work it out and let you know I'm liking that it doesn't warp though so what have we done today one more time Okay, so we started off with a uh, layered die cut and the first time I did this I did a flower so we did the butterfly your choice and that's the swallowtail butterfly from Alton U. next we did some paper piecing and this is from Ellen Hudson and it's the clever sausage set um, and the paper piece some plaid some and my final one just a really simple this would be a really good way to use up a lot of scraps and do like a quick note card set for a friend you know especially with these um, dies from Concord and Ninth because you know you could make a set using all of those and that's got that stitched so that was um, doing uh, adding texture with a cover die so that's just me playing with some more of my scraps. Any questions that I missed? Just trying to find the mouse. <laughs> Any questions? I think if I, I will get, go back and have a look and see um, if there's anything I missed. Otherwise, just email me. Or if you haven't joined my email list, I was going to say that's simple to do. Just go to my blog and you'll see either a pop-up um, when you're there or it's also in the sidebar on the PC if you're there and you'll get a freebie if you do that thanks for the thumbs up that really helps my channel and thanks for visiting I always have such a good time hanging out with you guys I hope to be around a little bit more often now I feel like I've caught up with everything and thanks for your help Michelle it's invaluable as always and the help from everybody helping me choose what to do I um, I'm going to play with the stamp wheel a bit more and I probably will do a live using the stamp wheel even if it's just an impromptu one um, just to because I need practice with it I haven't had a lot of time to use it as yet so I'm looking forward to it and especially seeing everything that can be done with it and kind of comparing it to the misty but you know if you are in the market for a new stamp positioner I am truly enjoying the some of the features on this it's as good as the Misty but it has extra added bonus features but there is you know there's that little bit dearer so depends what your budget is and whether you need it or just keep an eye out for a while and see what you think and where it all goes because I think there's big plans for it <laughs> thank you I'll head off now and I'll go and take some photos maybe add some bling and share them at my blog so thanks so much everybody till next time happy paper crafting bye <laughs>